2025 is the time to capitalize on your data skills and become a data engineer. If I had to start over today, I wouldn't touch pandas or even Python at all. I'd skip the dashboard tutorials and go straight into Databricks. And I say this with 25 years in the trenches, building pipelines on every major cloud, hiring and mentoring data engineers and managing data platforms for 225 million plus dollar businesses. If you want the real playbook for landing high paying, future-proof data jobs, here is what I would do today. Step one, learn SQL right inside of Databricks. Every real data engineering interviews starts with SQL, even at Fang. But when you use Databricks, you are learning at scale. Why? Hiring managers want to know, can you optimize a join with over a million rows? Not just write a select statement. Here is a must know interview question. How would you optimize a SQL join between two massive tables to avoid performance bottlenecks in Databricks? Pause the video now. If you can't answer, no worries. Go ahead and write the question down and then go back, practice your SQL basics in Databricks until you can answer that question with confidence. That is how you know that you're ready to move on to step number two, which is master Delta Lake from day one. Bronze, silver, gold layers, time travel, schema enforcement. This is your foundation for reliable data. Why? You're the engineer who catches bad data before it breaks the business. Here is your must know interview question. Explain the difference between bronze, silver, and gold tables in Delta Lake. And why does this architecture matter? Again, pause here. If you're struggling with this one, that's your cue to review the Delta Lake and Medallion architecture concepts before you move forward. Mastery here means fewer data headaches later. Step number three, skip pandas, learn Spark. Databricks runs on Apache Spark, the engine for massive data. Why? Because of parallel processing, distributed data frames, lazy execution, skills that you're never gonna outgrow. You're gonna build data frames, chain together complex transformations, and realize, wow, this is how Netflix, Amazon, and Apple manage their data today. Here's your must know interview question. How does Spark's lazy execution model work? And why is it important for processing large data sets efficiently? If that question trips you up, don't sweat it. Rewind and work through a few Spark transformations until you understand how lazy execution works. When you can answer that question confidently, then come back and move on. A mentee of mine was a solid Azure data engineer and he was stuck at about $100,000 annually. He could build pipelines, but he was always maintaining all this legacy ETL, never leading any innovation. After three months of focused Databricks projects showing off real Spark workloads, workflow automation, and Delta optimizations, he was hired at a unicorn startup for over $140,000. Same city, same years of experience, but suddenly he was the only person in the room who could answer the real questions about cost optimization, partitioning, and lake house design. That's what happens when you become the Databricks person in your organization. Let's talk numbers. According to the latest DICE Tech Salary Report, the average data engineer in the US makes about 124K, but Databricks data engineers average 146 to 155, and at top companies, it's not unusual to see offers well north of 175K, just the salary part. That is 20 to 30K premium for mastering the modern data stack and Databricks, and demand is still exploding. Databricks usage is up 80% year over year in Fortune 500 companies. All right, back to the step. Step number four. Automate everything with Databricks workflows. Manual pipelines, they break. Real engineers build modular notebooks. They schedule jobs, manage dependencies right in the Databricks UI. No hacky cron jobs. Why? Automation isn't a luxury. 
it's the difference between I hope this works and I know this scales. Here's your must know interview question. Describe how you would schedule and monitor a multi-step data pipeline in Databricks. What would you do if a step fails? Pause now. If you're unsure, practice building and scheduling a simple workflow. You're ready for the next step once you can describe your monitoring plan in detail. Step number five, build projects that tie directly to business value. Stop with the Titanic data sets already and Kaggle clones. Pick a real business metric, cost per order, time to insight, user churn. Be sure that you're ingesting, you're cleaning, you're transforming, and you're outputting something that really makes your boss or client say, wait, we could do that now? Why? No one's hiring for code. They're hiring for your ability to move the needle in the business and create some outcomes. Here's your must know interview question. Give me an example of a data pipeline that you built that directly impacted the business KPI. How did you measure that success? If you haven't moved a business metric yet, that's okay. Pick a real data set, try tying your work to a cost or time savings outcome. This is where real data engineers separate themselves from just everybody else. Step six, learn the Databricks compute model. Play with both all-purpose and job clusters. Understand execution plans, spot bottlenecks, and know what actually drives the cloud costs up. Why? If you can walk into an interview and talk about cluster sizing, spot instances, or partition pruning, you're not just another resume. You're the answer to their AWS or Azure bill that's sky high. Here's your must know interview question. Explain the difference between all purpose and job clusters in Databricks. When would you use each and how do you optimize for cost? If you're stuck here, go and play with it. Go experiment with cluster settings, job types, performance logs, and don't move on until you're comfortable explaining that cost trade-off. That is what's gonna get you hired. If you nail these six steps, you do what most data engineers never do. Build pipelines at scale, solve real business pain, get paid like you're indispensable. Most beginners never leave pandas or dashboard land. They get stuck in local scripts and never learn to think in pipelines or distributed systems. If you want to break out, this is your blueprint. If I was starting over from scratch, here's what I'd use. As far as books go, designing data intensive applications, as far as courses go, there's a Fundamentals of Data Engineering course on Udemy, as well as this Databricks and Spark Bootcamp. You also can take a look at this Modern Data Engineering on Databricks is also a great Udemy class, and then SQL for Data Engineering, and all these links are below. If this is the roadmap that you've been looking for, check out my Databricks for Beginners playlist right here, and then grab the free printable checklist below. Use it to build your own project portfolio step-by-step, step, and then subscribe if you're done with the fluff and ready to actually get paid for building pipelines that matter.